Hello everybody, how are you doing? I hope you are all fine. Today I am going to present some of the history and some of the influences of early childhood a prominent theorists, including Johann Pestalozzi and even others like Jean Jacques Rousseau, like Robert Owen and Frederick Froebel and also some other uh, well-known like Montessori and up to the uh, 19th century theorists. And uh, so if you are if you want to enjoy more presentation on these guys, please subscribe to the Bonanza Tube uh, channel. So let me come to the presentation about John Henry Pestalozzi, a prominent guy, one of the well-known person who had influenced the educational reforms and also the development of different other theories of early child education. Please follow this YouTube channel and don't forget to like and share for the sake of uh, improved YouTube algorithm calculation. Thank you so much. My name is Assistant Professor Abayada Geffen, currently working on my PhD on early childhood education at Addis Ababa University, Ethiopia. So in this particular presentation, we are going to discuss about the historical background of John Henrik Pestalozzi and his personal profile. And also we are going to see some of the theories, ideas and of his theories, his assumptions, principles, contributions, applications, even challenges and limitations, uh, and some of the drawbacks regarding his theory and the theories he had impacted preceding theories. So let's proceed. Uh, uh, so we're going to see historical background profile, uh, biography, his scary movement or, or, uh, or professional shifts, including his writing works, and his childhood experience. You know, the childhood experience he had uh, is one of the major impact on his viewpoint, assumptions and principles of child education and development. So, Johann Henrik Pestalozzi, a Swiss educator, he was born on January 12, 9, 1746 at Zurich, Switzerland, and died February 17, 1827 at Prague, Switzerland, aged 81 years. Um, he lost his father when, he was, when his father was age, aged 33, and when he was only five years old, and he was the second of the three children of his family. So, since he had lost his father at early childhood age, his family had to flood the area around Lecarno due to his personal face. So they had under persecution for their face. His mother Jose and his family's mate Barbara, nicknamed Babel, had to take care of him. Especially his uh, his family had to highly depend on their maid, Babel, for economic income and the improvement of their lives. Then uh, he joined secondary school at gymnasium in 1761 and he learned from well-educated uh, philosophers like Johann Jacob Bodmer, who was at that time teaching history and politics, and Johann Jacob Rentiger. Uh, the teacher of Greek and Hebrew. You know, these guys had uh, a portion of influence in his life. That's why I mentioned him, his high school teachers. And he used to visit his maternal grandfather, mother of the, the father of his mother, uh, who was a clergyman. That means a religious person during holidays at Hank. So. Together, they had to travel to see the schools and countryside and the villages um, and, and, and the life of the poor people and their children. So, he was very much impressed by the impact of uh, uh, you know, 
the problem of being poor on the children. He was very much, you know, uh, impressed by their ignorance, helplessness, suffering, and so on. So I think the idea of helping the children was born in Pestalozzi's mind when he used to visit the poor children in his countryside uh, uh, man's home of his you know grandfather so let's see how he moved professionally and educationally from one to the other you know at first i think due to the influence by his grandfather he was educated to be a clergyman a religious person but uh, he failed on the first sermon. I don't know what happened when he started preaching or serving in the church, but he had to quit immediately after he experienced failure um, to be the minister of you know religion that he had to learn from his grandfather. And but whatever he was trying as a profession, he. he he was trying to use those opportunities to apply his ideas to help the poor, to help the children. The first profession he chose to apply his ideas, his concern, you know, his vision to help the poor children was to try to be a preacher. But he had to fail. The other is he was very much influenced by the, the Jean Jacques Rousseau's uh, assumptions of child education. Child education. You know, Jean Jacques Rousseau was a French uh, philosopher who had really an immense uh, influence on the development of early child education. So, you have to shift from politics to agriculture. Again, after the failure at uh, the ceremony so he had to you know join the politics to learn law to learn politics to influence the, the, the childhood education of the people of Europe as well as that of the world however he had to be you know challenged due to his embrace of Rousseau's idea but at that time in Switzerland, the Rousseau's idea was considered threat to the state and the Christian religion in the half of the 18th century. So, uh, Pastor Lozzi was also under fire. 1965, Pastor Lozzi's former professor, that means high school uh, teachers, uh, Bodmer, uh, had to you know, accept idea of Rousseau and he founded Helvetic Society with about 20 professionals you know to promote advancement of freedom, human rights, equality in politics. So in those, uh, in those uh, uh, articles that they were producing uh, during by Helvetic Society, the, 90, the 19 years you know vibrant pastalozy was an active member of the society. So he had to, you know, contribute a lot of articles to the so, Helvetic Society's, you know, publications at the time. And past, uh, during that, those time, you know, he, he, he had fought for several cases of corruption to be revealed to society. However, he had to be, you know, under persecution due to his idea of, you know, revealing the, 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 the officials uh, under court corruption during that time, even he was prisoned for three days without any 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 uh, any crime. So these events caused Pestalozzi to have many political enemies and destroyed any hope of his legal career. So he had to now shift from politics because he could impair with the uh, with with oppression that he had to face due to his his, his involvement in politics. Then he decided to become a farmer because he was motivated by a person known as Johann Rudolf uh, 
Tishifeli, who was once successful at that time, uh, to be, you know, a businessman uh, by using an ab the abandoned land in Zurich. So now he wanted to be you know, a rich man. He wanted to be a businessman again to apply his ideas to help the poor, you know, to reform the education of the children and the economy of the country, the political of the country again. However, he had an unsuccessful farm project. Once the project could not be you know, successful due to the uh, unproductivity of the land he purchased, just like uh, uh, Sicily, uh, who was successful. So, first, uh, Lozi had to abandon agriculture. So, now he told to help the poor children on how to be self sufficient again, and so he had to. You know, change the Zurich farmland to Nehob Industrial School. The Zurich farm he bought was not productive, so he had to sell it. He had to change to a school. Then, again, due to financial problem, uh, the new foundation came to New Ruin, and now in 1779, the school was closed. However, by support from his friends, he had to retain the properties and remain his families in the building. You know, this man was really a person who had to try a lot of, you know, effort to uh, apply his ideas to revolutionize education, to help the poor, to improve the country. However, due to different factors, he had to give up one profession and pass to the other profession. Look, so he was left in financial problem despite the property being saved. Even his family and his friends abandoned him. What a poor man he was. His family members had to leave him in the Neho Industrial home or school and he was alone. So he didn't sit down. The man was unstoppable. He had to try theology. He failed. And he went to secondary school to study politics and law. He failed due to the ill political system during that time. He then turned to agricultural business, which again collapsed due to the unproductivity of land purchased and the, the bankruptcy. Then he changed the Zurich land farm to a kindergarten or new industrial school to help the children, which was again closed in 1779 and left the man poor and abandoned by his friends and family. However, he didn't stop there again. What did he do? He had one opportunity. Feudalism or the self dam was overthrown by French Revolution in, 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 in Switzerland in 1798. So Pastor Lozzi saw that, uh, that as an opportunity to become now a professional educator, to be accepted at the government level. And uh, so he had to prepare a plan to a Ministry of Arts and Science. Again, the minister accepted it to apply his idea. If, so, uh, the minister did not get a site to apply quickly in uh, quickly to, to quickly apply the plan of facility so the government had to establish an orphanage at stands for children who were victims of french army occupation and offered to pastelozzi to apply his educational idea so pastelozzi said once he received this opportunity to be the leader and to be one of the active uh, active person to help the children at Stan's orphanage, he said they were in a dreadful condition, both in body and the mind. The children he found there were those who were very much in need of help to be educated, to be promoted, you know, to be trained. And he took many roles. He was alone. He had to be a teacher, he had to be a servant, he had to be guardian, sitting <laughs> So, Pastor Lozzi really was a man who uh, had to pay a lot of price to the children. Uh, again, June 1799, the French army took stance back and Pastor Lozzi was abandoned from stance. They, they came back after one year. So, it was occupied again, stance. 
So he went to uh, Gurnigal to recover, you know, from the burden. However, when he was at Gurnigal in, in 1799, uh, he was assigned as an educator by at a Burgdorf by Sefe, a Swiss political and philosopher who used to support him as Stas. So uh, Sefe really had provided him with support so that he can be educated at uh, Burgdorf. So, however, the shoemaker who runs the school disagreed with Pestalozzi's method again, and he loved his position. A friend Herbert suggested him to read a book entitled Psychology to the to the science of education by John Frederick. He said, Oh, I read the book, and the, re the book threw a flood of light upon my whole endeavor. Though so, this is a place where he stayed a, lo a relatively a long period of time. So, so then he became successful in producing effective children and got promoted by the government. You know, Stephen, Stephen her helped him uh, to be educated at the Burgdorf Center in Switzerland. And the guy became now a successful teacher, an effective children, effective uh, producing uh, effective children, and he got promoted by the government. And then he opened his own school in Burgdorf. Then he said, educational school for the children of the middle classes. You know, for the children of the middle classes. That means that could also include the the lower classes, where he systematized and codified many of his methodologies. His ideas, his substance, his assumptions, and his approaches to educate the children. From Burgdorf to Yverden, 1804, and his days in 1825, what happened? Again, Napoleon government didn't like Pastolzi's idea and uh, his writings. He didn't like. So, Pastolzi had to leave Burgdorf uh, and go to Yverden. When he was in New Everton, that was a place where he relatively stayed for a long period of time. At the beginning, uh, the king of Denmark, Christian Theven, supported him financially, and he wrote a book entitled Views and Experience Relating to the Idea of Elementary Education, 1807. So, uh, Denmark king helped Pastelosi to write a book on his ideas on elementary education and in, 18, in, in 1807, and then many European countries had to send their ch children educators to Pestalozzi at Yeverden, and he used to train them, used to teach them, used to you know educate those teachers coming from different European countries uh, at his center, which uh, in Yeverden, for almost 20 years. So uh, he he. Uh, the educators learned from pastology that they had to teach Germany, French, Latin, Greek languages alongside with history, arithmetic, singing, geography, nature, literature, geometry, survey, etc. That means these guys who are to come to pastology might, uh, uh, they had, they might not have you know the opportunity to incorporate all this material to the education but now they got an experience from pastelosi and uh, in the burden again this agreement was you know created between the three major teachers including pastelosi that means nederer and Schmidt. so what happened was that nederer uh, recommended a neutral government commission to come and see what they were doing at Yeverden. However, Shimit didn't agree. And the government officials, the government officials came to Yeverden, evaluated it, and then they gave the feedback that they could not receive the Yeverden Center to be the state school. Again, the problem created, Shimit had to leave and they could not you know, cover his position, ever then again had to be closed in 1825. Ooh, what a poor man he was. He was strangled, he was struggling until his death. Imagine this man started, you know, struggling for the right of children, for the inclusion of children, for the education of children, for the development of children, since he was, you know, 15 years old, at which 
he started preaching at, you know, hog at his clergyman's hall. During this time, he wrote uh, Swan Song, a restatement of story, is, is his educational doctrines. That means, after uh, the closure of Everton. And also, he had to write Life Destiny. However, his friends had to criticize him because of these you know, books. So, he got sick. He got sick because he tried a lot. I don't know what, what sickness he had to you know, catch, but probably it could be stress of not being, of not being you know, accepted by either the government or friends or other professionals. So, on February 15, 1827, he was sick, he fell sick, two days after. February 17, 1827, Pastor died in Barak. So, on his graves, it was written like this, Henrik Pastor born in Zurich, January 12, 1746, died in Berg, February 17, 1827. Savior of the poor and the Nehof, preacher on the, to the people in Leonard and Gratitude. In a stance, he was the father of the orphan in Burgdorf and Manchembech, founder of the new primary education. In Everton, educator of humanity, he was an individual, a Christian, a citizen. He did everything for others, nothing for himself. Bless his name, Henrik Pastalozzi statue in Zurich. What a man he was, guys. Now, let's see some of the books he wrote. You know, sometimes he had to withdraw from public judgment and uh, to write some books. One of the major books include The Evening Hour of a Hermit, wrote 1780, which outlined this fundamental theory that education must be according to nature and that security in the home is the foundation of man's happiness. You know, children have to be educated according to their readiness, maturity, and nature. Two, Leonard and Gratitude, Volume 1, 2, and 3, and 4, in 1781, 1783, 1785, 1787. From this visual and personal life experience, he drew ideas and published four volumes of story titled Leonard and Gratitude. It was written for the people and it was a literary, literary success as the first realistic representation of rural life in Germany. So, he had to also emphasize on the role of women in education and helping the children to feel secured in educational arena. Third, Christopher and Elizabeth, 1782. Pastor wrote Christopher and Elizabeth in 1782 as a series of evening conversations to address social and political corruptions. You know, uh, Pastor Lozzi was not solely, uh, solely <coughs> stick to the, to the reformation of education. He was also very much concerned about politics, you know, about equality, about democracy. So I had to also deal with some of the ideas on these books that conversation made between Christopher and Elizabeth. Fourth, my inquiries into the course of nature and the development of mankind. How my inquiries, my investigation, my findings, how uh, nature can affect the development of human beings. That was written in 1797. He wrote about his views on human nature and the problems of its development and human nature and his conviction that people are responsible for their moral and intellectual state. Pastelosi believed, had believed that people are really responsible for their moral and intellectual state. So he was convicted, he was convinced that education should be a tool to develop that intellectual and moral state of mind. So when we came to the theory uh, on early child education and development of pastelosi, so the first one is that education is a right to all. It should be given for children of both poor and wealth, inclusiveness. As an education betters the life of society, it improves the function of society. Education should incorporate movement, 
active learning method should be one of the major center of education. Then education is meant to activate the already programmed natural capacity of the children. It's not simply pouring uh, information from the church mind to the student's empty mind. Rather, it's simply facilitating the development of natural capacity of the children. So, here it implies the role of the teacher. The role of the teacher is to facilitate to help the development of the capacity of the children. So, these are the, the major themes of a uh, view of uh, early child education and development. So, in his perspective, education should follow the child's nature and mothers are, are the children's most important teachers. And then, uh, formal education within a school is needed for children to integrate knowledge of home life, education, and, and reading and writing. Vocational education, reading, writing, all education based on sensory impression. That means children should be able to involve in what they are learning using their sensory sensory experience. Object lessons that focus on learning through manipulative are a critical tool in, in early child education. Then the teacher's role is one that should focus on teaching children, not subjects. That means the teachers might focus on what he was prepared on lesson plan at home that is to teach the subject but sometimes the teacher has to change as those ideas in order to help the children develop and learn by themselves that is the major idea of as a logic so education is a social process of organized growth and development education should be in accordance with laws of natural growth and development of children the lessons were to be learned through direct experience with objects and places through observation inquiry and reasoning one important concept of puzzle is the educational security classroom. So, children should feel emotionally secured, emotionally secured in the classroom. You know, at that time, during his time, the education uh, was like a factory model. That means, it was, the aim of education during the Industrial Revolution was to prepare the children to fit to their society's needs. That is industry to be the effective workers of industry so learning in atmosphere of fear is not always successful rather students should feel secure in classroom feel happy classroom feel independent and motivated and confident in what in whether they are learning. so he re, he you know had to reject the concept of memorization the concept of recitation repetition learning by repetition rather the children should be able to explore you know manipulate and uh, observe and be involved in what they were learning so he developed an alternative approach of uh, uh, Einstein which is a German word uh, uh, you know translated or you know understood as sense intuition direct concept observation of 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 uh, uh, direct concrete observation of concept and objectives. Children should be directly involved in what they are learning. So the principle of Anshuang is direct concrete observation of concept or objects of learning. Hence, Anshuang principle includes that children should not be able to use words before they experience what they learn. You know, what we have to understand that children really know what they want before they speak it so this principle should apply to early child education we don't have to you know uh, tell the name of what they were learning tell the name of what the concept is they were learning before the experience if effectiveness be needed so there are four major principles go from simple to complex from the cancer concrete abstract from the near to the far then move from one step to the other gradually as a major four principles that person tend to use. The other is the three H's principle or approach, the new approach. And there are three H's. That means head, hand and heart of children should be educated. Head represents the cognitive understanding, the intellectual development, the accumulation of knowledge. Hands represents the psychomotor development, the children's ability to, to, to do things, and the development of their motor and fine uh, movement of their, 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 their bodies. And the other heart, heart represents the motivation, 
the emotion, you know, the love that they have to, you know, have, to, they have to experience in during the learning. Children should be motivated. Should children should feel emotionally secure. So the three parts of children should be educated. The three ages: head, hands, and heart. So when we have to see the combination, you know, head and hand represents when children are made to design a structure. Their mind is involved. Their hand is also involved. So they have to produce something. They have to think about what they are doing, and also they have to move their their neuromuscular muscle uh, movement, and that should be coordinated with their mind. So that is the idea of Pastelos, you know. Again, hand and heart can 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 work together. That is when children are involved in abstract works like drawing, you know, uh, like drawing, like artists, and hand and heart also can be involved head and heart in in singing class children have to study with their mind what they are going to perform and they have to, they, they have to also uh, understand how they sing that's head and heart and the three can also be guys uh, combined that's head hand and heart so the children can be made to plant in a school garden and, and protect, uh, and then uh, use the, the, the developed uh, school garden, and then from those fruits, prepare a meal for the community. In this case, the head, the hand, and the heart are involved. That means they need to have information how to do, how to protect the garden, so they need to use their hands in order to develop the garden, and then they have to be you know, emotionally and uh, you know uh, emotionally involved motivated to produce the meal for the society or for the community how so pastology had to you know influence educational reform and uh, he had to come up with uh, the development of constructivist curriculum that was his influence so uh, Montessori, Piaget and Dewey were really significantly influenced by Pastelosi's ideas while they developed their constructivism uh, theory of learning. What are the limitations? You know, the limitations on Einstein was not really applicable in, in, in secondary school, uh, so it was not considered a hard rule of uh, education, but because in Einstein principle, children had to first experience uh, manipulate with what they are going to learn before they know the name. Uh, but in history class at secondary school, children, secondary school children could not be able to, you know, manipulate, go to the site or what happened in in previous time. So uh, that was not possible, you know, always. Um, for the, even student when we are while teaching democracy, um, children could have cannot have uh, you know uh, an opportunity to go to the real environment to to, to be involved in election voting because the law doesn't allow them. Mm, but secondary school students might you know uh, make a role of uh, you know election and voting in the school. So the principle of Einstein is you not know, a hard road. Secondly, uh, financial investments are needed in order to effectively apply his, his, his uh, principles of education. What was the legacy? For what do we remember Pastelosi today? One major idea, inclusiveness, that is that has got an attention in every part of the world today. That all children, poor and wealthy, you know, all children, disabled and fine, have to be, you know, given the opportunity to learn, to be educated. The other is the certification of infant teacher education that became in Britain. So, you know, <clears throat> different uh, elementary educators have to come from Europe 
to learn uh, from from Pestalozzi during a, uh, you know 1808 at the Verden. So he had to give them a sort of certificate. So they institutionalized the teacher education certification at their countries. The other, there were different foundations, schools, and academy affiliations named by Pestalozzi and the child care centers, residential schools. These were all his impacts and legacy for what Pestalozzi is remembered. So, <clears throat> this is what we have. Thank you very much. And um, this is, in short, the history of Pestalozzi. For those who want to listen and learn and say something about the early, some, some of the theories of early child education. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe and like the YouTube.